Kate. Welcome to another edition of the Kilton Home Center. Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about some parts on the Ford 8N tractor. Um, a Ford 8N tractor, they have a common issue with them is the um, lift cylinders and the three-point hitch will start to settle down over a period of time as the pistons that's in there starts to wear down and break down. And what's called the top cover, um, that piston tends to wear out. And um, as a result of that, the, um, the hydraulics will drift down if, once you turn the tractor off or if you push the clutch in, which takes away the, the uh, PTO power from, the, or excuse me, it takes away the power from the engine to the hydraulic pump. Uh, once you push the clutch in, it, the alarms will start drifting down, especially if there's a heavy item on the back of the tractor. So this video is not gonna talk about uh, rebuilding the top cover in, in regards to how to take that off. There's a lot of good videos out there that explain the process of taking the top cover off and to replace it. And there's even some videos that talk about some of the things we're trying to talk about, but I wanna share some experiences I have with my top cover repair that on my tractor. Well, my 48 n tractor is a 1952. And Ford 8N, I think also the 9N and the 2Ns also had this. This here was how they sealed the, the this is your uh, piston, I guess you could call it, uh, for the ram in the, um, on the original style. And they used uh, three, three rings, similar to piston rings on a car, to seal off. And these, you know, obviously they worked for many, many years, but they weren't exactly the best design out there when it came to hydraulics. They tend to, you know, get some scoring in the cylinders, the, you know, the metal wearing on metal and eventually wear out. And, you know, of course you get the drift down of the hydraulics that we talked about. So you can buy these and replace these on your, on your 9N, 2N or 8N tractor. And um, it'll be fine. You could, you know, buy a new cylinder or you could just buy a new piston and rings and put them in there. And of course, um, anybody has done any work on cars, these, you see the, the uh, right here on these rings, there's the gap, you know, that has to get collapsed down. And as it's going in the cylinder, it pushes down and it kind of pushes out. But you're going to make sure if you do that, you stagger these rings so they're not all lined up. So maybe you do each one, that gap, a third of the way around so they're not lined up. Otherwise, you can cause problems with leaking and wear and stuff like that. That's the type of, that you could do if you want to go stick with it originally. After this design, they went to a new style on the Jubilee or the NAA tractors. They went to a piston system like this, wherein there was a um, very similar in design, similar in diameter and everything else. Um, they went to a different way of sealing wherein they used a rubber O-ring. And then on the other side of the O-ring, they would use a leather backer. And the purpose of that leather backer, I've been finding this out lately, is to push against for, for the, the O-ring to push against, um, the, when the pressure's there, pushes the, the backer against the metal here, and it keeps the, um, the O-ring from rubbing or wearing on this and causing a problem. Oftentimes, the backer that they use is, what they used to use was a piece of leather, as this, uh, this was here. Well, it's still a piece of leather, but obviously it's not working very well. Um, I had an issue with my tractor wherein the hydraulics weren't working properly. They were working great for a time, but a part internally broke on the pump. Um, anybody that follows me on some of the Facebook groups, you can see the issues I was having. And I was trying to fi figure out what was going on the other day without dropping the pump out. I had the access panels off. I was working to make sure there's no binding or, or uh, uh, things going on in there that were causing the issues where the, my hydraulics wouldn't go down. And at one point, the hydraulics went all the way up and the pressure relief kicked in, in other words, and it would not go down at all. And after a few seconds of the pressure relief, uh, it blew out the O-ring. Typically, that, that was like I said, that shouldn't have happened. This is the O-ring, you can see it blew out. So I was gonna repair it and put another O-ring in, and I talked to some guys and they said, um, rather than using a leather backer, which it works, but it's not the best method of doing it, they have an, a neoprene backer that would work with this versus leather and it's it holds a little tighter the leather tends to stretch and get really uh, not as uh, pliable or workable in this situation and can deteriorate um, where a neoprene backer is more reliable it would just like this except it's made out of very like a neoprene rubber like the o-ring and so that would go here and then this obviously would go it's got a concave surface very similar to the leather one where it would kind of 
bends and folds around and then it pushes up against there to protect the o-ring so i was going to do that in order and uh, there's a lot of places that are great online to deal business with um, oftentimes you see o-rings which are a very inexpensive item uh, for maybe a, like a dollar or two dollars for the o-ring in the backer online and you go to order it and they want to hit you shipping for five dollars to me it made no sense there is a hydraulic shop that's uh, local to me that has been in uh, business since Moses wore short pants. So they've been around a long time and have a really good reputation. So I decided to stop by and talk with them this morning and see if they could help me out with the O-ring and the O-ring backer. Maybe it's a, like a stock item that they had. Well, I went there and the guy said, hey, what's going on? I told him, I showed him what I had and what I was working with. He just grabbed out his uh, slide caliper, took a couple of measurements of the O-ring on this, walked back in the back, and he grabbed me an O-ring and a Teflon backer. He said, in his opinion, the neoprene backer works good, but in their opinion, in a hydraulic shop, he says they have better results with the um, Teflon backer versus a neoprene backer. I guess just a little bit more sturdy and a little bit more durable. Granted, we're not dealing with 3000 PSI uh, system here. Probably if I had to guess, I think these are around 1200 to 1500 PSI, but um, I took his advice and I said, um, yeah, I said, I really appreciate it. Of course, they're a really friendly local shop. I've done, I've had them do business or stuff for me before that I was outside of my um, capabilities. And of course, I said to the guy, I said, hey, I appreciate that. Um, you know, and he told me how to, you know, best way to go have out installing it. And that's why I'm doing this video. And I said, how much do I owe you? He says, don't worry about it. He says, no, he says, they're, they're uh, the stuff's you know, kind of inexpensive, not even almost not even worth uh, charging up. So I, I didn't have to pay shipping. I didn't have to pay for the O-ring. I got really lucky. Now, he said, one thing to know about this Teflon O-ring, he says, do not stretch it. As you can see right here, it does not fit over the top of that. He says, do not stretch it. He said, he said, what we do is take a razor blade, cut a slit, and just kind of push it around it. And then, of course, the O-ring will stretch out. He says, the Teflon, if you go and stretch it, it's not going to return back to size and it's going to be ruined and it's not going to be as effective as what you want. So after I left, I got to thinking about it and I thought, you know, that's really a good idea, cutting a slit in it, but is that going to cause a problem with fluid leaking or anything like that? You know, even at a small level, I know probably not a lot would get by because the O-ring is doing most of the work. And I thought, I wonder if I should cut it at an angle. And sure enough, somebody on one of the Facebook groups just happened to bring up what I was thinking and I thought that was really cool. He said, hey, Newt, he said, that's a good idea. He says, but my recommendation to you would be cut this slit at an angle if possible. That way the two pieces will overlap. So that's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make the, the cut that I need to cut. We'll come back and I'll show you how to install that, the, uh, this uh, backer and the O-ring on this piston. Okay, welcome back. So what I did while we had the camera off is I took a razor blade and this stuff cuts fairly easy and I cut an angle slit in there. So rather than just going like that, I cut it at an angle. That way we would be able to, um, it would kind of, when it comes together, it kind of overlaps versus there being a gap there. So maybe it helps with a little bit better of a seal. So when it comes to installing this, this side here is the side where the ram arm, I guess you could call it, goes in the piston. On this side of the piston here is where the pressure is taking place with the hydraulic fluid. So he told me, the guy at the hydraulic shop, and I've also seen this line, but I, you always have to look really well or watch a video to kind of know how this goes. And I might, that's the reason I'm doing this, so it's a little more hands-on and more explanation as to what is going on. He said, you want, if you're only putting one of these backers on, there's only room for one on here, not one on either side. He initially thought maybe we'd get one on either side, but there wasn't enough room there. He said, if you're only putting one backer on in this situation, he says, you're gonna put the back, you want the O-ring to be on the side of where the pressure is gonna occur because obviously this is a single action cylinder where hydraulic pressure is only coming on this end. There's not hydraulic pressure then coming from the other end. That the weight there is what pushes the hydraulic fluid out when it's when, it, when the valve allows it to. So the O-ring wants to be on this side here where the hydraulic action is taking place at. So first we're gonna put this seal on here. I'm not gonna really need any lube on it. I got a, my little bit of an angle cut there. This seal here, there's no um, different, like uh, some of the ones I talked about, the neoprenes, they have a little bit of a cup where that would go against the O-ring. This doesn't have it, it's just straight. So we're just gonna take that, spread it apart just like that. Bam, right into place like that. Not a problem in the world. And you can see here that will come together. Once it goes inside the cylinder, that'll push it together and it'll be kept 
uh, and a better seal in that regard. So now we want to install our O-ring on there. Now, best thing to do is you don't want any um, abrasiveness going on in this O-ring. Any abrasive or, or tearing or anything like that is going to wear this O-ring out faster. So what I do and what they recommend doing is put a little bit of oil around here, put some oil on the O-ring, just a little bit of nice film, and then it'll help roll and stretch it into place right there on that soon. So I got some old ATF bottle. This is this has been around for a few years, but I kind of use it in situations like this. Just take a little bit, put it on your finger like that. Or if you want to wear gloves, it's probably a little cleaner. Just kind of wipe it around there, okay? Where it's going to slide down, the O-ring is going to slide down. So it helps it slide into place, less chances of damage to the O-ring itself. And I'll probably put a little bit there on, and that's just regular transmission fluid. There's nothing fancy, nothing special about it. Any kind of lubricant will work. I'm just choosing to use ATF because that's typically what I use in an application like that. And then I still got some here on my finger. Get a little bit more. I'd rather have a little too much than not enough in this situation anyway. Give me just a second here. A little bit more. All right, that'll be plenty right there. And we're just gonna coat that O-ring really good. And of course you wanna do this too when you go to stick it into the cylinder. When you go to put this back into the cylinder, you wanna make sure that the, the cylinder's got a nice amount of lube around the edge and then your O-ring is nice and moist there. So now we're just gonna simply carefully stretch this O-ring over top of the piston ring. So it's kind of a little love, a little rolling action, and there it goes right into place. It starts to go right down there, boom, right into place. So that works really well there. You can see it's gonna give it a really nice, good, tight seal. There's our gap there. Now you see it's sticking out past the cylinder. If you look here, you can see it's not even with the cylinder, which is a good thing. But once it goes in there, it's gonna be tight, press fit right in there, and it's gonna be good to go, and that's gonna help out. So again, this is an install video or a teardown video of the top cover, but rather an explanation of the uh, piston and how the differences in the old style versus the new style and some different techniques. Again, there's nothing wrong with a neoprene backer. I've, I have seen a lot of other guys say they had really good luck with them. I just happened to use the Teflon one because the local hydraulic shop shop had it. And they said, here, you know, go ahead and use this. Um, this and that was their experience. It worked better. So I'll probably do another video down the road talking about how the seal goes and how it does in the application. I'm just wiping off my extra oil right here right now. But for now, this is gonna work out really well. I really have a good feeling about this. I have a feeling that this is gonna work a lot better. One thing I will mention too, I didn't mention earlier, when I had that new, the new piston and it worked really good and it was staying up really good before the pump broke, that is. It was staying up really well and it was holding, maintaining. I turned the tractor off, come back a couple hours later and maybe had maybe an inch or two of drift at the most, a few hours later. I did notice, um, right before or right around the time the pump was acting up, I was starting to get a little bit more drift. Still not as bad as it was before, but I attribute a lot of that, I'm thinking too, that oh, that backer there, I don't think it was working as well as it could have. Maybe the the, the O-ring wasn't as, as a superior of a product. I feel a lot better about this, like I said, talking to the hydraulic shop and having them help me out and explain a few things to me. I found it very helpful. Uh, before I close up, I just want to share with you, I had mentioned earlier in my video about Facebook groups out there. And there's a lot of good ones out there. And if I don't mention all of them, please do not think that they're not good ones. And please, guys, don't be insulted that I didn't mention the other ones. There's a few that I'm a member of that, that the guys are really helpful with. There's the only 8N group, uh, Ford, Ford 8N group. And that's all they want to talk about is Ford 8N tractors. Not they don't like the other ones, but they're trying to keep it specific to that type of a tractor because obviously there's difference between a 2N and 9N and 8N, but that's another thing for another day. There's the only Ford 8N group that I participate in. There's also another one called, I think it's a 2N, 8N, 9N club, uh, you know, Ford tractor club or something like that. That's another one. There's another one for N series track or N tractor group. That's another, uh, another one. And then lastly, I think the last one I'm a member of, I think there's three or four of them is a red belly group. We're talking, referring to the red belly four tractors and that can go from, you know, and I think they even talk about the older ones all the way up into the NAA or the Jubilee model. I think you actually red belly is even up to the 600 and some of those others that still had the red belly underneath of them. So, I know I rambled a little bit there, but I just wanted to tell you where I get a lot of my information. Again, I don't know it all. A lot of guys in that group are really helpful. Um, in fact, some of them have actually given me some ideas on uh, doing short videos uh, similar to this on the uh, 8N tractors for frequently asked questions and frequently asked uh, uh, things that people want to know about. 
Um, one guy, Bruce Haynes on there, he has a list on the only 48 uh, group. I think it's also on the other ones that I've talked about too. Uh, 75 tri uh, tips and tricks for your 8N tractor. We're gonna try to do a video on some of those tips and tricks because it's a really handy tool. And it's funny being on the groups, if you're on there for a while, you'll see people will say, hey, um, what's this, what is eight, uh, two plus two? And it's everybody always, is, and everybody knows the answer to the question, but there's newbies coming along that don't know. And, but they're really helpful and very understanding. But that 75 tips and tricks, we're gonna try to do them into a video series. So I appreciate your time and patience watching this video. I hope you found this very helpful. If you like this video, please give it a like. Um, if you're interested in seeing more videos of this type or things around the homestead, I encourage you to subscribe to our channel. And then of course you can hit that notification button uh, to be uh, the bell to be notified when we have future videos coming up. Thank you again for tuning in to another edition of the Kilted Homesteader.